was released in Japan on the 17th of December in 2011, and it is set to be released inside the United States on the 22nd of February this year, 2012, and actually did get it early because this is a Japanese version of the Sony PS Vita, but don't worry, it is region free and it's region unlocked, which means that you will be able to play US games even though it is a Japanese PS Vita once the US games are actually available. So that part doesn't really matter too much. So I wanted to go over the technical specifications first, but I wanted to say that the PS Vita actually uses something called the PS Vita card instead of UMDs, which is what the Sony PSP used for games. And the PS Vita cards are actually little flash memory cartridges with games preloaded on them. So here we go. We have the port right here for the PS Vita card and I will open it up. And as you can see, that's roughly how big the cards are. But because, again, this is a Japanese model, you can't really get the cartridges anywhere unless you buy them online. So I actually did just get the games through the PlayStation Store. So let's close that up and let's actually go over some of the technical specifications of the PS Vita. So to start off, the PS Vita has a 5-inch OLED multi-touch capacitive touchscreen that's running at 960 by 544 QHD with 220 PPI or pixels per inch. So this is an absolutely amazing screen. Let's get a close up there. It has high details and it is extremely crisp and it is just one of the better screens out there. Again, like I said, it is a five inch touch screen. So that is pretty amazing for a portable gaming device. Now it also has a rear touchpad that's capable of accepting touch input to control certain games. And I'll actually demo that a little bit later. Okay, so it also has a D-pad or directional pad, four buttons, up, down, left, right, and it has 12 other buttons. It has triangle, circle, X, square, left trigger, right trigger, as well as start and select buttons in the bottom right hand corner there. And on the left hand side we have the PlayStation Home button. We also have the volume up and volume down buttons right here and the lock and power button right there. As you can see it locks the screen and it also turns it off if you hold it. So this is a good time to show you guys the lock screen now that it is locked. This is just the standard lock screen. As of now you can't change it and you just peel away to actually get inside of the device. Also, you will notice that the PS Vita has two analog joysticks, one on the left-hand side and one on the right-hand side that you actually use to control games, and most of them are set up the same way, where you use the left one to move around and the right one to look around. So that's typically the game setup, and it works just like the controller on a console, such as a Xbox 360 or a PlayStation 3. And this is actually the first portable gaming device to actually have two joysticks. Now it's also powered by a quad-core ARM Cortex A9 MP core processor and the processor is typically clocked at 800 megahertz to 2000 megahertz. Sony claims that this PlayStation Vita is clocked at 2000 megahertz. Now it also has a quad-core SGX 543 MP4 Plus GPU or graphics processing unit. It comes equipped with 512 megabytes of RAM and 100 128 megabytes of dedicated VRAM or video RAM. Now it has a front camera right there and a back camera up at the top right there. Now both of the cameras are 0.3 megapixels and the front camera is capable of recording at 60 frames per second with a resolution of 320 by 240 while the back camera is capable of recording at up to 120 frames per second. Now this thing also has 6 axis motion sensing as well as a 3 axis electronic compass and it comes equipped with standard 802.11 Wi-Fi, Bluetooth Bluetooth 2.1 plus EDR, and it is also available in a 3G model, with AT&T being the carrier inside of the United States. Now, the Wi-Fi only model weighs 260 grams, while the 3G model weighs 279 grams. And in comparison, the iPhone 4S weighs 140 grams, while the iPad 2 weighs either 601 grams or 607 grams, depending on 3G compatibility. As far as the software goes, it runs on Sony's new Live Area interface, which is the successor to a cross media bar, also known as XMB, and that was used 
in the PSP as well as the PS3. And what's actually interesting is that the settings portion of the PS Vita actually looks a lot like a cross media bar. So let me bring it up here. And it is actually possible that it is part of a cross media bar or it was built off of part of a cross media bar. As you can see, this is kind of the standard generic layout that the PS3 and the PSP were built off of. So let's go back here. And now I'm just going to go over a couple of quick things for the PS Vita. So first of all, let's actually go over like I said, some of the basics. As you can see, these are all of your applications. So you have one screen here, and to actually go to the next screen, you swipe down. And to go back, you swipe up, obviously, and the more applications you add, it goes to different pages. Now you can move different applications simply by holding on them and taking one and moving it down. And the great thing is that you can put them wherever you want and you can have blank spots, unlike the iPhone or the iPad with iOS. So you can put them basically anywhere you want on the pages instead of actually being restricted to filling all of them up first. And you can change the color of each page as well as actually setting a photograph for the background of the page simply by hitting the little theme icon in the lower right hand corner here and it brings up a menu. So you have different colors that you can pick from and you can also switch on over here and grab a picture. So I'm just going to set a picture of my dog for the background of this one. And then let's go up here and let's actually change the background of this one to red. Let's exit out of that. And now, as you can see, the background of this one is red. Top one switches back to blue. We go back down, it's red again. And then back down here, it is my dog. So that's basically just an overview of pages and how they work. You can also add new pages if you want, as you can see, simply by tapping the plus button down there. So if you feel like you need more pages, you can always hit the plus button to add additional pages. And once you have applications open, you simply swipe over to the right. And as you can see, we do have the application area. Now, this is actually pretty interesting because it has a couple of different things. Now, each application is slightly different, but you can get help simply by tapping up there, like so, and it brings up a web browser. Let's actually go back here. And also, too, for different ones, you can swipe down and it provides the history of what you've actually done in that application. Like, for instance, say you were playing a game. Let's swipe over here. Say you were playing Uncharted, you can swipe down and it gives you your past achievements. So as you can see, it says activities and it gives you all of your different activities and all of your achievements. So let's swipe back over here. And to actually start the application, simply tap in the middle. And to go back to the home screen, you just hit the home button and it brings you back here. Now this actually does not leave the applications running in the background. It basically just saves them as the state that they were in. And when you open it up, it resumes that state. So let me just go ahead and switch over to Uncharted here. Also too, some games actually disable network features. And I don't exactly know why that is, but it can get quite annoying. And when you try and open up another game, it will cancel out of the game that you are currently in. So that can also be annoying. But let me just get to the point I'm trying to make here. Okay, so let's go continue and yes. And let's get it to a part where we can actually play. All right, as you can see, we are playing here. And let me just move ahead on this log and then I will show you guys that it resumes the state we're in. So as you can see right there in the background of continue, it actually has where we left off and we can go into something else like into settings, go back to the home screen, swipe over and we can resume right where we left off. But if you wanna actually close out of an application completely, just swipe over to the application that you wanna close, take the little peel that's in the top right hand corner and just peel it away. And it does actually close out of that application entirely. So that was basically just an overview of how to navigate the PS Vita. All right, so now let's actually look at a couple of other things on the PS Vita really quick. So we can tap on the photos application right there and it brings up the camera once we hit start. So as you can see, we are actually in video mode right now and we can switch over to the front facing camera simply by pressing this button here and it switches to the front facing camera and we can switch to video mode simply by pressing the middle button there and we can actually take pictures and videos by hitting this button. 
and then it saves it to essentially your camera roll. And you can access that simply by tapping it right there. And you can swipe between your different pictures. So now we're actually back at the home screen. We're going to go over a couple of other things. Now it comes preloaded with friends, group messaging, a browser, the PS store or the PlayStation store, and also music party near, which shows what people are playing near you, remote play, content manager, trophies, welcome park and that's basically just a standard welcome application that tells you about the ps vita and it also comes with one more application videos other than that i downloaded the rest of them through the ps store and let's actually take a look at that really quick so when i open up the ps store you will actually notice that it is all in japanese and that is because i had to set it to japanese and i had to use the japanese ps store because the us one isn't open yet because obviously the Sony PlayStation Vita isn't released inside the United States until February 22nd. So inside of the PS Vita store, you have access to PS Vita games as well as PSP games. Once you go to the PS Vita portion, you have games up at the top. As you can see, you can actually buy the games if you have points on your PlayStation account. And down below the games, we actually have game add-ons. Below that, you have your free trials. And below that, you have PV, which I'm assuming stands for PlayStation Video, because it does have all of these different trailers and clips. So let's actually go back to the home screen here, and let's take this time to look at one of the trailers. And as I mentioned earlier, sometimes when you open up certain applications, they close out of other applications. So here we are inside of the videos application and let's just take a quick look at this video right here let's rewind it so as you can see the controls to actually access the video are extremely easy and self-explanatory and you can fast forward just by scrubbing through so the video does look nice crisp sharp this is an absolutely amazing display that provides awesome video quality so let's exit out of there. And now, finally, I just wanted to go over one last thing, show you guys the rear touchpad and actually give you guys a demonstration of that. Okay, so let's just hit continue to this. And as you can see, let's spawn here in three, two, one, and there we go. So now you actually use the rear touchpad to control it. As you can see, I'm moving the touchpad around and it is responding on the actual device itself. So you use it to control the little character here and to move him towards his goals. So that's basically it for this review. Again, I did review the Sony PlayStation Vita. I hope you guys liked my review and I hope it helped you out. And hopefully it helped you decide whether or not you want to get the PlayStation Vita for yourself the Wi-Fi only model will retail for $249.99 and the Wi-Fi and 3G model will retail for $299.99. Please rate this video up if you guys liked it. If you have any comments, leave them down below in the comment section. And if you aren't already subscribed, be sure to hit that subscribe button 